Hello, I'm Hugh Glover, retired art conservator from the Williamstown Conservation Centre, where I spent much of my time focused on picture frames, including those from the Clark. The Clark has many interesting frames, and every new exhibition is an exciting opportunity to consider the framing and how it influences the art. Today, let's take a look at the frame on Fumé Danbury, painted by John Singer Sargent around 1880. Nowadays, you'll see the picture in a gilded frame that was likely made in the mid 20th century. It has a curving OG profile between two lines of ornament and a contrasting band of sand. While this frame does not detract from the painting's brilliance, it is a common style and not the frame originally intended. Some artists don't give much thought to how their works will be framed, but Sargent evidently did. We know that he collaborated with his frame makers to achieve the desired effects for his painting. He also used antique frames to create a suitable marriage between frame and picture. The French carved oak frame on the Clark's portrait of Carolus Duran is a likely example of Sargent using an 18th century frame on his 19th century painting. The Fumé painting, but not necessarily its frame, had been stored in Paris during World War I and stored again in Montreal during World War II. And it's these movements that could easily account for the loss of the original frame. We know what the original frame looked like because of an archive. In 1949, Sargent's sister, Violet Ormond, donated some of her brother's papers to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and among them was this photograph. The frame that we see here is unusual for the 1880s, when Victorian excess was the norm. It is simpler and more aligned with an aesthetic or avant-garde style. It was likely custom made, perhaps in Paris. It has a wide beveled flat surface and 10 knotwork ornaments. And while the outside edge is only partially visible in this photograph, its profile is clearly shown in this drawing, also in the Met's archives. There is a quietness to the painting with this pastel colouring and pensive subject. This quality is extended through the frame with its wide and shallow profile, broad plain surfaces, and the absence of strong shadowing. Furthermore, the interlaced ornaments echo the Orientalist theme of the painting. In the photograph, we can detect the outline of the separate leaves of gold. This suggests that the gold was applied using water as a medium, as opposed to oil, and surfaces would presumably have been matte rather than burnished. One detail is not apparent here, the shade of the gold leaf. If I were to guess, I would say that it was a pale gold shade designed to harmoniously complement the gentle tones of the painting. Well, really, I've only touched the surface here with a little frame history, artist's intent, and the influence of a frame. But next time you're in the galleries, standing in front of this splendid painting, perhaps you'll remember that once it had a splendid frame too. Thank you.